हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हियर इज आशु गुप्ता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर अगेन वेलकम्स यू ऑल ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ द इंद्र प्रेस लॉ कॉलेज इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ग्राउंड फॉर द इंटरवेंशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द मीनिंग एंड द काइंड ऑफ इंटरवेंशन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर यू मे सी इट फ्रॉम दीज लेक्चर सीरीज about the meaning or, or the kinds of the intervention now in that uh, uh, lecture today uh, we will cover uh, about the grounds of intervention what is the grounds for intervention given in this chapter uh, of the international law so first of all there are uh, some types of uh, uh, grounds given in case of any intervention uh, we will discuss uh, one by one about that the first one is uh, self preservation so self preservation is uh, the uh, topmost ground uh, of uh, any case of intervention wherein the supreme court interest of the state overrides the law the rights of self preservation is more sacred than the duty of respecting the independence of other state a state has right to interfere in the affairs of another state where the security and immediate interest of the former are compromised interventions in order to ward off imminent danger to the intervening state are justified by the force of circumstances and the danger must be direct and immediate not contingent and remote and if we talk about the second ground for intervention is that enforcement of treaty rights if we talk about enforcement of treaty rights uh, you can say that uh, a state is justified in interfering in the affairs of another state if the provisions of any treaty oblige the former to preserve the independence or neutrality of the latter such intervention does not violate any right of independence because uh, the state that suffers has conceded such liberty of interference by treaty the next ground for the intervention is grounds of humanity so that is another justification based in, on the ground of humanity and lawrence observes that in the opinion of many writers such interventions are legal but they cannot be brought within the ordinary rules of international law which does not impose on states the obligation of preventing barbarity on the part of their neighbors the fourth ground for intervention is balance of power in case of balance of power you may see that the doctrine of the necessity of a balance of power observes fanwick between the leading states as a basis of mutual self protection dominated the international relations of 19th century most of the interventions in the balkan peninsula should be regarded as interventions in consonance with the policy of balance of power intervention on the grounds of prevention of the balance of prevention has been condemned by jurists of all ages in this continuation the fifth ground for intervention is protection of persons and property protection of persons property and interest of its nationals may provide justification for intervention the necessity for protection may arise due to gross injustice or due to injury caused by unfair discrimination 
the next ground for intervention is civil war in civil wars in in the intervention uh, on the time of civil wars it says that uh, with the establishment of uno there is no justification for intervention by the individual states in the civil wars of other states the un charter imposes an obligation upon states to refrain in the international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state the next one is collective intervention it means that at the present time collective intervention is in pursuance of the provisions of the un charter the enforcement action under the authority of the un security council in accordance with chapter 7 of the charter and uh, except these grounds there are also some other grounds such as uh, if uh, the state subject to the intervention has been guilty of a gross breach of international law in regard to the intervening state if it has itself unlawfully intervened and self defense if intervention is necessary to meet a danger of an actual armed attack and in the affairs of a protectorate under its dominion and to protect the rights and interest and the personal safety of its citizens abroad so these are the basic uh, grounds for intervention given in this chapter in the subject of international law except these grounds for intervention there are also some provisions attached with uh, this of un charter according to the provision in the un charter article 2 implicitly prohibits intervention on the part of individual state when it uh, ordains the members to refrain in the international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state in international law however permits intervention as uh, dictatorial interference by one state in the affairs of another state only as reaction of former against violation of its right by the latter such a doctrine is possible only if the balam justum principle is recognized balam justum is a latin term which is used in that chapter of intervention hope uh, you will understand the whole concept of grounds for intervention and the prior discussed meaning of intervention and the kinds of intervention very well we will meet soon again with the next lecture be safe be healthy thank you thank you very much